Hey everybody, it is Thursday. I almost said Friday. It's not Facebook Friday today. It's Facebook Thursday. Tomorrow's Good Friday and I am going to take, I think, part of the day off tomorrow. My oldest daughter's coming home, so I want to be available to spend time with her. Hope you guys are having a good week. I hope you have tomorrow off too. It is springy outside and I'm thinking I want to spend some time outside. I know some of you are getting snow. That's very strange to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I see you guys jumping on. Let me see, make sure I can find you on my iPad. Okay, there we are. Make sure the volume is down. So today we're gonna do three projects using the Pets and More stamp set. This is a online exclusive and it's a really cute stamp set. It's one of our reversible stamps, which means that you can see the little shadow right here. You can flip the stamp to the back and stamp it onto the detailed image and it colors it in, makes it an easy way to color your stamps. Um, we're gonna do that one on one of the projects, but the other two I'm gonna show you other ways to color your images. Of course, we're gonna use Stampin' Blends. Um, and get your paper snips ready because there are no dies. <laughs> we'll have to cut them out old school. I know some of you get mad when we have to do that, but I mean, what else are we gonna do, right? Okay, um, I wanna remind you of a couple of things. So this catalog right here, and this catalog right here are nearing the end, nearing the end of their catalog life. Um, April 30th for both of these is the last day. Um, we switch over to a new annual catalog um, on May 1st. So with that comes the retired list. We've talked about it. Um, I've linked it a couple of times here on Facebook. If you haven't checked it out, you can go see it. There's these two lists. Last Chance Products is what they call them. And if you notice, um, they have discounted pricing over on this side, but the discounted pricing doesn't start till April 9th. So we still have a long way to go. Um, they, I don't know why they do that. I just know that when the demonstrators get to see the new catalog, then we automatically know what's retiring. So I guess they were like, well, we might as well just put it out, but we're not gonna discount until about three weeks left. So some of the things have sold out. Some of the things are on low inventory already. So you have to decide on these things that maybe you really want. Is it worth waiting for the discount and hoping it's still in stock? Or do you want it bad enough to pay full price and guarantee that you have it. You have to decide that, depends. Um, I know I like to wait till like close to the end and then see like, oh, you know, I, I think I do wanna get a couple of those and a couple of these things that are significantly discount. There are some things 30% off, some things 50% off, like the super cool stamp set and the Le Shops designer series paper. So take a look, um, the PDF is by page number, and I always go through my catalog with a red Sharpie, and I write R next to the, the stamp sets that are retiring. The other thing you have to remember is that it'll say um, the bundle is retiring, but the stamps and dies will be in the new catalog. What that means is that when you buy something as a bundle, you save 10%. In the new catalog, they won't be offered that way. You can only buy them as the stamp set and the dies. So if there's a bundle that you want, it's better to get it before the end of the catalog period. That way you can save 10%. So that's that. The other thing that I mentioned last week, I had a little post-it note of things that were going up in price. Like everything in our world right now, we have prices that are going up. Um, I'm gonna share with you when I'm done, somebody typed up this amazing list of things that are going up. I think we can share this. I better double check, but I'm pretty sure I can share this with you. Things that are going up in price in the new catalog that you might want to stock up in uh, now so that you can get it while it's still cheap. Um, cardstock, envelopes, liquid glue, glue dots, dimensionals, ink refills, stamp and blends, stays on, memento, white crafty, basically ink, Versamark ink refills. Um, I guess not a regular ink pad. Does it stay? Yeah, those are staying regular price. So ink refills, blends, stays on in Memento, Craft, and Versamark. Those are all going up. Um, some of our storage tools that are going up in price are punches. There are some um, 
So I got punches, tag topper punches, the spritzers, blending brushes, take your pick tool. Anyway, I'm not gonna go through the whole thing. I'll share it with you guys afterwards. That way you can know um, how what's going up. If, if you care enough to stock up before the end of the catalog period, you can. Um, I mean, we're talking, you know, a dollar or two here and there. Um, but you know, some of you like to bargain hunt like me. So you might want to take advantage of that. All right. I'm going to turn you guys around. I want to show you this paper pumpkin kit that I have. Um, this month's paper pumpkin, right? What's this month? Yeah. March. Okay. Hold on. Let me see if I can do this without pushing the end button. This month's paper pumpkin. I have a few extras. Let's see if I can get this right. Hold on. Thank you for your patience. Hold on just one second. Okay, this month's paper pumpkin. I have some extras. Sometimes I don't have extras. Like last month, I mean, the month before I ran out of extras before I even got them. Um, sometimes, you know, like if you get a new credit card and you forget to change your billing for whatever reason and then you end up not getting the kit because your billing didn't go through, I always get extras in case, and I hear from many of you every month that happens. Um, this month is called Memorable Meadows. And it has two stamp sets. And March is our, it's Paper Pumpkin's birthday, so they always have a, an uh, extra free stamp set in there. Um, Garden Green Ink Spot. And this, I just opened this. I hadn't even had a chance to look at it. Um, this, oh, look at that. There's a little insert for your um, stamps. I hadn't even seen that yet. Um, this one is a really beautiful uh, set. It's got these beautiful cards. This matches our Garden Meadow Designer Series paper envelopes have the print on the inside you've got some embellishments more card bases and then we've got labels then there are these giant wood pieces they're really cool they're really big and uh they, they go on your cards so if you need a paper pumpkin if for some reason you didn't get yours this month or maybe uh you want to get one, this one for a friend, just let me know, email me. I have a couple of extras, okay? Um, let's see, what else do I have to show you? Um, Club Create, we have about, about a week left in this Club Create subscription period. This month's Club Create features the Beach Day bundle. This bundle is carrying over. I love this bundle, it's one of my favorites. Um, I had a lot of fun playing with it. So um, if you would like to Subscribe for April. This is your Club Create kit. Beach Day is carrying over. Um, it's one of those that if you want the bundle price, you better get it now before it goes up, or I guess regular price. Um, you can always add on the bundle to your kit, and when you do that, I pay the shipping and tax for you. Um, so this month is four cards and a little either uh, mini suntan lotion holder or a beach hand cream they're both the same size from bath and body works this is what my kits look like when they come um you get about 20 25 dollars in product new product that hasn't been opened you'll have lots left over i had somebody tell me uh this week uh with their easter lilies class kit that i sent them they were they had already made 19 cards from what i had sent uh, because they had so much left over so um you do get a lot of extra product in your kits this was January's kit, I think. Um, it comes in a little plastic uh, document holder so that you can store. It's really good for storage because I know we don't all get to our kits the day they come in the mail, right? Um, it's $45 a month. That includes shipping, PDF, and a about a 40, 45 minute video each month. Um, it includes five projects, 20 to $25 in new product. And you can join for one month. You can join for indefinite, you can join for whatever. You can always cancel is my point. There's no like, you're not locked in. And um, if you stay for six months, I give you a $25 product credit and Club Create peeps, if this is your sixth month, I sent that email out this morning. If you didn't get it, check your spam. And then if you still didn't get it, email me so you can get your free $25 gift from me, okay? All right, so that's Club Create, that's April's Club Create. Next month's Club Create, for those of you that already have the catalog, the new catalog, if you're a demo, it's the Country Flowers uh, stamp set and dies. It's very cute, I just finished it this morning and I will show you guys next week how cute it is. All right, my class for this month is the Just Kidding or Kidding Around uh, 
class to go. It's actually a fundraiser class. Um, if you saw my video that I posted this week, I do a Alzheimer's Association fundraiser once a year at least. My dad um, has Alzheimer's and um, I feel really strongly about supporting the research. They're very close to finding a cure. Um, I shared in the video that my dad was actually on a drug trial for many years that we felt very strongly really prolonged um, his quality of life. And unfortunately, he developed AFib and had to stop the drug trial. And as soon as he did that, we saw a quick decline. So that drug trial really is a result of these scientists who are doing research to find a cure. So I share all that just so that you know, that's why I am trying to financially support these groups because every one of you, I'm sure, has been touched by this disease. You know somebody in your family, you know a friend who has a family member. I mean, I could count off the top of my head probably 20 friends who has a family member with Alzheimer's. It's so um, prevalent. And so we gotta find a cure. So hopefully by continuing to support them, they will find that cure sooner rather than later. So anyway, um, this is that's my class to go this month. Every penny I make on this class, I'm gonna be writing a check to the Alzheimer's Association. Um, it's six cards, really cute with these cute little babies. You're gonna get a full pack of paper and I am gonna ship it 12 by 12. You're gonna get a bolt of linen thread and a pack of uh, foil gems. You can get it with the bundle or without the bundle. Um, the deadline, so I, at the end of April, I'm going to Mexico on the Stampin' Up! Incentive trip. So I have to get this out before I go. Um, I, I, of course, I didn't write it down. It's either the 18th or the 19th of April, the deadline. And then I will have it shipped before I leave around the 26th, okay? Um, Nidia, uh, just um, email me that, okay? And I will, uh, we'll talk about that. Um, pri so Chris, no, catalog prices increase, also increase Club Create. No, Club Create stay in the same. Uh, about a year ago, I raised the price of Club Create um, to just kind of keep up with everything. So we're good. We are good to go. Um, straight donate. Cindy, you guys, if you want to donate through me, um, you can send me an email and we'll figure that out. Or you can just go to the Alzheimer's Association website and donate directly to them that way too if you want but um i can do it for you as well so email me okay um okay that's that that is that oh the other thing i was going to say is all of this is retiring so at any moment <laughs> i might have to turn registration off for this hopefully not actually i take that back this is carrying over this is retiring but this is you have to have this for the class kit. So it, when this, if this sells out before registration closes, I will have to close um, the class registration. This is this game we play this time of the year as demonstrators, um, you know, frantically stalking our inventory uh, report, hoping that things haven't sold out before we get them for our classes. Um, but that cute stamp set is carrying over, which I'm really glad about. Okay, let's see. Oh, I've got a couple of things I want to show you. Sandy sent me something sweet before I left for on stage, and I really wanted to show you guys. Cute cows. You guys, I told you, I think that the cute cows um, stamp set was the most commonly used stamp set in the swaps that I got in Holotus. In Holotus. In Houston. Holotus is where I live. That is not where on stage was. Houston. Um, and Sandy had sent me this before on stage and look, Sandy, this is amazing. She sent me a clear block that has my name on it and has on stage Houston. So I'm going to pull this out and start using it because I love it. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much, Sandy. Um, she also said this cute, how cute this was before St. Patrick's day, little punch art, St. Patrick's with some popcorn. Cute, cute, cute. Um, you guys want some projects using the cutest cow because I feel like everybody's using it so cute I really need to use it I was thinking not either I, I'm going back and forth I have the uh plants what's it called the planted paradise set sitting out right now and the cows so those two are coming for Facebook Friday um here in the next couple of weeks I don't know which order it depends on how quickly <laughs> I can get them done Okay, so th Sandy, thank you. And then I also wanted to thank Lois. She sent me this beautiful card and she sent me a stack of these cute bowls that I broke. So thank you so much, Lois. I really appreciate it. It's so thoughtful. You guys like make me cry. You, you're just incredibly thoughtful. 
Um, I strive to be that thoughtful in my own life. So you guys are an inspiration to me. This card is really cool. Really cool, Lois. Um, anyhow, thank you, thank you, thank you. Very, very much appreciated. Um, and then I got one other card from uh, Shelly Gardner. She's the founder of Stamping Up. When I was in Houston, I got to walk the stage for my 1.7 million. And she came up to me and Rhonda as we were walking off and she gave us a hug. And she said, I have to apologize that I'm just now sending out your card for the next milestone, which was 1.8 million. So this card is for, from her. And the funny thing is, is that this last week I crossed the threshold for 1.9 million. So it's happening very fast. So we are rounding the bend for my next million dollars. Unfortunately, we don't get to design another stamp set. That was so fun. I want to do that again, but that's okay. I got to do it once. And by the way, Ta Fiesta, Taco Fiesta is retiring. It's unorderable right now, but it's not... I don't know. It's not, last time I checked, it was not listed as like discontinued. So I think they're making more. I don't know what's happening with it. But anyhow, I just wanted to share that card because it's special. When it comes from the founder of Stampin' Up, you definitely feel special. Okay. Um, so today's projects, what, my clock is slow. Uh, today's projects aren't going to take us forever. Aren't gonna, they're, they're simple. They are simple this week. So I feel like we might get done by three o'clock today. I don't know. We'll see. But I did talk for quite a bit of time. Um, last week's winner is Tracy Horton. Tracy, I have your address. Unless you've moved, please let me know if you have. Thank you for sharing my video. Um, yes, Cindy, I have seen that class and it is super, super cute. Yes. Um, I know. I, I just want to cry every time I see it. Somebody use it. Um, so Tracy, thank you. Thank you for sharing my video. This week I've got a hot air balloon bundle. If you would like the hot air balloon bundle as a free prize, um, all you have to do is share my video, this video, either on Facebook or on, um, YouTube. And just let me know in the comments that you shared and I will pick somebody at random next week. Okay. All right. Has anybody checked the blog post? Is my is my uh, blog post up? I did it all yesterday. I uh, was so sleepy yesterday. You know when you're just sleepy all day and then the next day you question, like, did I do everything I was supposed to do in my sleepy stupor? Hold on, let me grab my tape. Um, I hope that it's up and I hope that the links are right. Anyhow, um... This PDF is free over on uh, pinkbuckaroo.com. We're gonna make three pets and more projects. Here's all the supply list, the measurements, the host code. If you would like these to be sent to you as a free make and take, um, this is what they look like. Here's last week's. I package them up, I make you a little thank you tag, and I send them to you as a thank you with an order over $35. Um, you can order anything you want. If you want to stock up on adhesive and cardstock, go for it. I really don't care. As long as your minimum is $35 and you use that host code, I will send you a free make and take kit. Now, there's no pre-stamped images. That's one of our big rules is that we cannot stamp the stuff for you. You got to do the stamping yourself. But I will do die cuts and scoring and I will send you embellishments, that little pieces of embellishment that you might need. So these are free. Um, as a thank you. Okay. All right. All right. All right. I think we are ready to go. Um, I didn't mention the all-star tutorial bundle. Um, here's my project for this month. This is a free PDF that I send you. If you spend $50 with me, um, <laughs> Karen, you better put your headphones on cause I'm loud. Um, the, the All-Star Tutorial PDF is a free PDF I send to everybody who spends over $50 with me. Um, I'm a little bit behind. I didn't send it this last week, so I will do that when I'm done today. But um, those of you who got the Latte Love class, I sent it to you today along with your Latte Love PDF as a thank you. Um, it has 12 video tutorials in it and all designed by different Stampin' Up! demonstrators. And they all feature the Rock and Roll Suite from the spring catalog. Okay, I think we are ready. Now, you guys, today's projects, I said, are simple. And then when I say simple, you guys know that me and simple aren't really, like simple isn't necessarily my forte, right? 
<laughs> so my simple may not be the same as everybody's simple, but I think they're pretty simple. This card um, we did in Houston. Um, we had a um, team gathering and uh, we had a couple of projects that everybody could make and this was mine. And this, so this stamp set, let me tell you what, what how it works. And the plants one we're gonna use next week, I think are the same. Um, when you stamp it, so you stamp the detailed um, image, you clean it and then you turn it over and you use the back side. you stamp in another color, stamp off so it's lighter, and then you stamp it right onto that image. So that is one way to color it. And on our last project today, that's what we're gonna do. But, you know, I like to have variety when I color. So for this first project, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> I'm not gonna use it in the right way. We're gonna actually stamp it on colored cardstock. Um, I'm also using, this stamp doesn't have any words, so I am using perennial postage for this card and the next card. Um, and then, you know, I've done a lot for a lot ahead of time. Did I? Let me see. Let me make sure. Let me see what all I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I did a lot ahead of time. Um, the exposed bricks uh, embossing folder is the background. You may not be able to see it, but it's back there. So we've got that. Um, this die set right here is retiring. And I want to cry because I love it. The tailor-made tags... I use them a ton. If you like to make tags around Christmas time, especially, you need this stamp or this die set. Um, and I've told you guys this before, I have multiples of some of my dies. This is one of those that you might want to have multiples of because if you're gonna make a whole bunch of tags, um, you can, if you had two die sets, then you could run two of them through at one time. Dies are some, some, something we sometimes need multiples of, right? Um, so anyway, tailor-made tags, they're leaving. Make sure you get them if you haven't gotten them already. So I use the largest on the Glorious Gingham Designer Series paper and the second largest on um, just basic white. Now there the, there's these two dies right here, and these are the little um, reinforcers that go on the tags. And so I already cut those out of pecan pie, all right? And we're just gonna put a little tiny bit of glue. Come on glue, don't fail me today. Just a little tiny bit. A teeny dot is a lot. A teeny dot. All right, I'm gonna get my take your pick tool. Let's see if my putty can be arranged where it needs to be. We're gonna take this one and we'll put it right there. You know, the reinforces is an extra step to take when you use these dies, but I, I really think it's worth it. I think it makes your tag really extra cute when you put the little reinforcers in. I'm gonna try to zoom in just a bit. Let me see, there we go. All right, so we'll set those aside to dry, and then we're gonna stamp our little, our little guys. I have, do I have ink? Oh yes, I already took it out. I have Smoky Slate ink, so we're gonna stamp the owl and smoky slate ink on smoky slate cardstock. And then we're gonna stamp pecan pie. We're gonna use pecan pie for this cute little rabbit. And we're just gonna do him on basic white. Okay, so now if you wanted to, you could clean it off, flip it around, ink it, stamp off on scratch paper, and then boop, right there, and it would be colored in, if you wanted to. But I'm gonna leave them like this. Um, now we need paper snips and I had paper snips here not two minutes ago. They grew legs and ran away. Let me grab these. Actually, I took them over there. It was me. It's my fault, of course. I only have like eight pairs of these in here and I can never find any of them. Um, okay, when you are gonna cut these out, you guys, stay on the outside of the line. You wanna leave just a little bit of a border around it. When I was teaching kindergarten and first grade, I would say leave a cloud around your your image. Whatever you're cutting out, leave a little cloud around it. All right, stay right. Oh, my scissors are filthy. <laughs> I'm sure you guys can see that. Look at that. They need to be cleaned. No ribbon cutting with these gunky things, that's for sure. Um, stay right in the middle 
of your your scissors. The thing about paper snips is they are so sharp that that gunk doesn't even it doesn't even stand a chance. They just still will cut beautifully. Now probably not on ribbon, but they cut on paper really well. And the good thing about these paper snips is that they're small. And so you can get in the nooks and crannies like that. You know, I've told you guys about these scissors and how they're like dangerous because they are really, really sharp. And my mom actually like stabbed herself <laughs> with some really bad. Well, this week I stabbed myself with my take your pick tool. Um, and you know what? That hurt really bad. Can you see it right there? So yes, I'm the one that uses my take your pick tool. Where did I put it? With And I leave it like that. So it's my own fault. You guys put your, put your things on your take your pick tool. Does this one fit here? Is it different? There's an end for that, isn't it? Who knows? I don't know. Let's see. What do I have? Oh yeah, right here. Does this go on there? Yeah, see, I should keep it like that, but I'm lazy and I don't. And I suffered the consequences this week by stabbing myself really badly. It hurts. Okay. Um, let's see. Why do I have extra paper? I'm trying to think of what I need this for. Oh yes. Okay. <laughs> I got it. I got it. Don't worry. I remember now. Um, you want to cut a piece of the pecan pie designer series paper too. That's from our neutrals paper stack. And you know what? I'm not going to use this strip because it's crooked. So let's get another piece. Um, the paper stacks that we have every year, the paper packs, they're six by six and they're each color family. So, you know, like the brights, the neutrals, the subtles, the reals. Um, so they retire pretty much each year and then come back with a new pattern. So of course that's going to be the same this year. New patterns. All right, let's chop this. It looks like I stamped it crooked too. I'm just gonna chop, stamped it in memento, and now we're ready to put it together. This is Berry Burst, and I'm gonna adhere my embossed exposed brick, I know you probably can't even see it, um, piece right here in the middle, three and three fourths by five, and then we're gonna take the gingham tag, yeah, it did not feel good, I can tell you that right now. And I was trying to be like, oh, it's fine, it's fine. It didn't bleed right away. I was like, okay, but then it bled and it, it just really hurt. I need to keep Band-Aids in here. I have said that all for years and I don't have them in here. All right, so see how I kind of did them offset like that? And then we will do our piece of pecan pie. And our little dudes are gonna go on with dimensionals of course. Let me get one of my little bowls for my dimensional backing. Well, I dropped that one. I thought the owl and the bunny would be cute friends. And then the sentiment says, thank you for your friendship. So again, you can change the sentiment to anything. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thanking of you. I don't know. There's a lot of different options you could do. But this one, I thought these little guys look like friends. Let's use thank you for your friendship. <laughs> yeah, Brandy, I, I need to. I actually bought a little pack of them at the Dollar Tree when I went last week, and I don't know what I did with them. Who knows? Who knows? Oh, you know what? Let's put a little piece of basic white on the inside like that okay and then last but not least linen thread and you know it's pretty curly when it comes off that bolt and if you just kind of rub your fingers like this on it it kind of straightens out a little bit sometimes i want it super curly but sometimes i'm like okay you need to calm down you're a little too curly you guys it's opening day baseball season who cares? Does anybody around here care? I wouldn't know, except that my husband is very excited, and so I have to pretend like I'm excited too. We do love the Astros. Now, he may love them a little bit more than I love them, but I do love them. So that just means now we watch baseball every night. <laughs> so much for watching anything else fun. If there's an Astros game on, forget it. 
Oh, Kathy, go Braves. Yes, I knew we had some fans on here. So, by the way, what I just... No, Lori, go Rangers. Oh, I know. No, I do like the Rangers. I, I will give it to them. I do like the Rangers, too. Um, by the way, if you didn't see what I did right there, I did not tie that on the tag. That's too tedious. Just use a glue dot to set it down on there. And there you go. Pretty easy. That would make an easy swap card, too, don't you think? Pretty easy. And... If you've got glorious gingham designer series paper, you can use any of those. Well, lemon lime twist glorious gingham paper. I'm having a hard time using it up. It's very bright, but I think all the other colors would be just fine. It, I love lemon lime twist, but that, it's just so bright. I don't know. I can't find. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna try to use it. I've got a lot of it. I've got a lot of lemon lime twist gingham paper left. Okay, so there's our first card. Now our second card also features Glorious Gingham. And if you were on stage and you swapped with me, you got this card right here. This was my swap card. Um, now you'll notice that I used the Blueberry Bushel uh, Glorious Gingham paper. And because I made swaps with that paper, I don't have any of it left. So we're gonna make it using Pretty Peacock, which I think it looks just as cute I mean, they're just different, but cute still, right? Okay, now this time, what we're gonna do with our little guy, our little dog, is we're gonna uh, color it with Stampin' Blends, okay? Let me see, let me make sure I'm using the right paper. I have several pieces of white over here. I'm gonna make sure I use them the right way. Cute in any color, Karen, I agree, I agree. Okay, we're gonna stamp our pupper right here. Memento black, basic white, and then we've got the dog bowl. Now, what I found with the dog bowl is it's very shallow. Sometimes you get a photopolymer stamp that's shallow, and if you push too hard, the, the ink gets up in here. So if you watch my YouTube recording of this video, you'll see I got ink all up in there. So just tap it lightly and then stamp it. There we go. I was, I was just stamping it a little too rough. Really, we only ever need to just tap, tap, tap. But some of us, me included, we get a little aggressive with our tapping. A little aggressive. Okay, I'm gonna take Pecan Pie Light and I'm gonna color her in. She's so cute. I'm gonna give her that white, I'm gonna leave her face white. Actually, no, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to leave her muzzle white. I couldn't remember what I did. I had to look. Leave her muzzle white. Color it all in. There we go. And now we'll come down here. The artist kind of leaves some breaks in the color or in the, the outline of it. It's just drawn kind of loosely. But just continue your color where, you know, even like right here, if there's not a black line, you just, you know, you know it's supposed to be there. So just go ahead and color it. You guys, we have this airplane that goes over the house multiple times a day. And it sounds like an airplane at an air show, you know, like, like it's doing some kind of maneuvers. And I kept thinking, what is that? So there's an app that you can get. Do you guys, are you guys familiar with these apps? Um, <laughs> Lois Aggressive Stamper, me too. Um, there are these apps. The one that I have, it's called Flight Radar and you can open it and it'll show you all the planes in the United States. And you can click on the ones that are going over your house and it'll tell you for the most part, it'll show you its route. It'll show you where it's coming from, where it's been and where it's going. Um, and so I looked it up. By the way, I'm using the dark to add in just some shadows, okay? Um, so I looked at it, and we have um, an Air Force base here. And it is an Air Force um, propeller plane. It has a propeller on the front. And they come out here every day and do all these, like, training maneuvers, I guess. I can't ever see them when I look out my window, but I can hear them. And so I watch them. Um, I'm always like, there he is, and then I'll look it up and... It's the same airplane. They come out twice a day. We have a lake past our house and they go out to the lake and they you can see them on the radar. They do all these like curly cues and stuff. My husband thought I was crazy. He was like, I think you're imagining that. And then so he's working in his office up there and I 
one day I texted him, I said, did you hear that? And he was like, no. And then I texted him again and then he said, oh, I did hear that. He just couldn't hear, I guess, over his TV. I don't know. But I just think it's funny that they're doing maneuvers over our house twice a day. I just imagine like an instructor, you know, with like a student. And he's like, okay, let's go again. He probably has to do the same thing over and over again. Anyways, just a little interesting tidbit from my new house. We didn't have that in my old house. I never heard it over there. All right, let's cut this around and around. Same thing, little white cloud. Um, oh, <laughs> Elaine, bye. She's going to watch baseball. I, what time is the Astros game today? I just took a screenshot of the, the schedule. I think it's this evening, I'm sure. My youngest has basketball now, club basketball on Tuesdays and Thursdays until 9.30 at night. And it's, it's like 35 minutes from the house. Oh, it's so late. So we take turns. Tonight's my turn. I'm not excited. She said she goes early morning to practice. She went early this morning, like at, I, we left the house at 6.30. And she'll stay after, won't get home until 6.15. And then we leave at 7.15 to go to practice. I'm like, friend, how are you doing this? She said, I'm fine, I'm fine. They have the day off from school tomorrow. Do you guys have the day off from work tomorrow? I definitely was never dedicated enough to anything to, to do that much practicing. Lots, lots and lots. Okay, now we have some other pieces. I have cut Glorious Gingham four and a fourth by five and a half. So we're going to cover the whole card front. Then I have this other piece that is three and a half by four and three fourths. And we are going to take this uh, stylish shape circle. Boy, you guys should have seen the panic at on stage when, when people thought that the uh, stylish shapes had retired. There was gonna be a crying and weeping all over if these dyes had retired, but luckily they are not. I, I believe they're online exclusives, right? Somebody will tell me. They'll only be online, but they'll still be available. For us as demonstrators, we kind of have to have to stop using this stuff when it retires because then if somebody wants it, we have to say, sorry, it's not available anymore. So for those of us that do things like this, we panic when we lose our favorite things. All right, so we've cut that out. You want to make sure that you get it centered as best you can. It looks like I might be a little to the left. Save this for another time. Now we're gonna use this embossing folder, and I know I'm zoomed in quite a bit, you can't really see my cut and emboss machine, but I'm gonna take off the clear plates and plate two, and we're gonna put this in here, and when you see the Stampin' Up! logo, that's the top, the, that's the side where things will be raised up. So I'm gonna put it, it doesn't really matter, but we do have those stitch lines, um, so I want those to be kind of on the, you know, look like they're cut from the front. So I'm gonna line it up with that line right there, and I'm gonna put it in. This time you've got to use plate four. This is one of the basics 3D embossing folder. And it is comes in a three pack, three, three different embossing folders. And it's one of my favorites. Um, deckled circles. Oh, Elizabeth, I think those are online exclusives, aren't they already? I think, and I believe that they are there, somebody somebody, tell me. If you go to the website right now and look at them, if it says retired, that means they're leaving. But I think those are online exclusives, or is it the deckled rectangles? I can't, I can't remember. It's hard, all these things, some are online only, some are in the catalog, it's hard to keep up. All right, on the back side, I'm gonna put some glue and a little piece of vellum. This is leaving our catalog, which there was a lot of crying, weeping for vellum. I have a feeling it'll come back at some point in a different form probably. Man, I'm really off-centered. Can you guys see? <laughs> I didn't follow my own. Make sure you're in the middle. Um, we won't be able to tell too much here in a minute. All right, uh, adhesive. Deckle circles are online exclusive. Okay, good, so they're still there. We don't have to worry. I know, Erin, right? What are we gonna do without vellum? I don't know. Is there any vellum in the new catalog? 
like patterned vellum. I can't remember. I haven't looked at the new catalog a whole, whole lot. All right, let me get my dimensionals. Get a new sheet. And we're gonna put some dimensionals. Whoops. Dimensional, oh, come on. On the back, four, one in each corner. <laughs> Elizabeth, you were nervous, huh? You like them? Yeah, I like those too. All right, we're gonna put that right here. Now, I put the vellum there to kind of soften the center to make it a little bit less busy. And now we're gonna take our pepper, as my girls called them, a little pepper, and put that there, and the little dog bowl, pumpkin pie dog bowl. Thanks, Sally. And we're gonna just, I'm gonna tuck it in behind him a little bit, so it's kind of in the background. Now we've got, this is the one that I'm the most sad about, the um, Give It A Whirl dies, that are my very, very favorite. I use them constantly. Um, we are losing those, those are leaving. Um, I'm using Big Hugs right here from Perennial Postage. And what color did I use? Pecan pie, which I think I put over here, yep. Yeah. All right, now normally I would tell you to stamp and then cut your shape, but for the sake of the video, I'm doing it the hard way. Hey, and I did pretty good. Not bad, not bad. It just barely fits there, so you gotta really make sure that you are in those lines. All right, we're gonna put that there. Now, let's do some embellishing. First, let's take our linen thread again. And, y'all, my middle daughter turns 17 this weekend. 17 feels really old. Like, 16 doesn't feel that old, but 17 to me, I feel like, whew, that's old. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. She still seems, I don't know, she seems like a baby to me. How did that happen? <sighs> All right, I tucked that behind right there. There were four things on her birthday list. She wanted an iPad keyboard. She wanted an iPad stand. She wanted black socks and white socks. <laughs> I was like, Emma, come on now. Think of some, some fun things. She couldn't, she was like, oh, well, I don't know, I don't know. So I have to do some creative shopping for her. Um, this little tag right here, you guys, I saw Susie, I don't know if Susie's watching, but she used one of her little sequins to make the little tag, and I was like, oh my God, that's so cute. Joan 48, that probably feels old too. Yeah, that probably feels pretty old. Um, she'll be 48 before I know it, I'm sure. So use your little sequins to make the little dog, the little dog tag. And then my one of my favorite embellishments we have right now are these cork rounds. Um, they're the cheapest embellishment we have right now. And I'm just gonna add those. I like the texture of those. And there you go. Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's one more thing. I forgot to do this on yesterday's video too. There is a little paw print stamp in this set. So let's just put some little paw prints on the inside. Again, it makes the space for writing just a little bit smaller so you don't have to write so much. For those of us who are lazy, you like the cork rounds too, yeah. Clever on the dog tag, right? I would not have thought of it, but Susie, she put on her card and that was like, oh my gosh, why did I think of that? It's so cute. Oh, thanks, I'm glad you like my kids' stories. I was trying to think, oh, hey, you guys, I wanted to thank you for voting for Ellie. I posted yesterday that Ellie's art um, is in an art show. Um, I have a friend who is actually a professor at, at Baylor where she goes and she had sent me a message that they got an email to vote on people's choice. And so then I asked Ellie about it and she's like, oh yeah, anybody can vote. I'm like, why don't you tell us? So now I showed it to you guys and we had 3000 people see that post yesterday. So hopefully she'll win. I don't know what she wins, but <laughs> for us, in the Sirwin family, if it's a comp competition, if it's a contest, we are all in. We like we like to win stuff, even if it's just a name. Like, we won. That's all we care. <laughs> We're very competitive, all of us. Okay, which color do you like better? Pretty Peacock or Blueberry Bushel? I, if I had to pick, I would pick Blueberry Bushel. 
I love blueberry bushel. Uh, pretty, pretty peacock is a lot of people's very favorite color. It's not on the top of my favorites because I like brights. It's a beautiful color. It's just not my favorite. What do you guys think? And the orange goes well with both, I think. I don't think you need to change the dog bowl color. Either way, it's cute. Um, yes, Lois, you can, my youngest daughter in our little family text yesterday, she said, I voted 20 times in a row. So just so you know, you can keep voting. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know if it counts. They were all texting their friends, you know, like vote for my sister. Baylor's gonna be like, something weird happened with this one. She got 20 million votes. <laughs> something weird happened. She must have shared it somewhere where a lot of people saw it. That picture, the painting, um, if, you, if you look, the one that has her face and all the different, um, I forget what it was called, it was a long and skinny one that she painted last year. Um, that's one of my, that's maybe my very favorite painting she's ever done. Um, I actually bought it. Uh, she did an art show last spring and I bought it at the art show because I didn't want anybody else to buy it. <laughs> I wanted it and it's been hanging in our house. And I had to take it up to her when I went up there last month because she wanted to enter it into a contest. So she better be glad I bought it because if somebody else had bought it, she couldn't have entered it into the contest. Um, she actually had four pieces in the contest and you can vote if you want to scroll down on Facebook, you'll see it. Emotions, going through the emotions, is that what it's called, Michelle? Yeah, she, uh, that painting took her a really long time. She worked on that here at the house for a while last year, maybe over Christmas break, and it was, it was kind of a beast. Okay, one more project. Now, I have a problem, okay? And I didn't realize it. The, the dies that I'm using, did I put them up? Oh, what did I, did I put them up? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I wanna show you these dies that we are using today. These two. I, okay, we have two new die sets in the spring catalog, but I can't keep them straight. There's thoughtful expressions and everyday details. The everyday details dies are carrying over. The thoughtful expression dies are retiring. These are the thoughtful expression dies. Yesterday in the video, I think I called them the other one. However, big problem, they're unorderable. So people are saying they've already sold out. However, however, on our inventory status report that demonstrators get to view, it says they could possibly come back in stock at the very end of April, okay? So if you wanted these and you didn't get them, there is some hope. I'm not guaranteeing that they're coming back, but there is some hope. Hopefully you got them because they're beautiful. They are awesome. And we all are like, why in the world are these retiring? The stamp set is carrying over, but the dies are not. What is up? What's up with that? I don't get it. I don't think they, I don't think they predicted them to be as popular as they were. Okay. Let's make this little box. What's in the box, you ask? Well, let me tell you. How about lemon crisp Kit Kats? Now look, I know some of you do not like lemon Kit Kats, and if that's you, I'm sorry. You can use regular Kit Kats too. Some of you have told me that these taste like furniture polish to you, and I'm sorry they do not taste like furniture polish to me. They taste like heaven, and they are delicious. So if you don't like lemon, I'm sorry. I like lemon, so that's what I'm using. They're just the regular little mini size. You can get any of the little mini, little tiny Kit Kats, okay? This project, there's nothing lemon about it. I just wanted to make a little box for them, okay? <laughs> raise your hand if you like them. If you hate them, then don't raise your hand. We don't wanna know. <laughs> I love lemon. You guys, okay, here's another lemon thing if you like lemon. I was at my favorite store in the whole world, you know, TJ Maxx Home Goods with my mom last weekend, was shopping for her really, um, with her for something um, that she wanted. It wasn't for me, even though I found many things. They have like a little gourmet food section, you know, with some weird things in there. And they had, you know how you can get those yogurt covered pretzels, the vanilla ones, my family was like full on addicted to those. Well, they have chocolate ones, they have vanilla ones, and they have sprinkles on them. And I like them because the sprinkles are kind of extra crunchy. Well, they had lemon ones. Lemon yogurt covered pretzels, lemon flavored. And they, I bought them, they were the delicious. So if you like lemon, you need to go to TJ Maxx and look, because they were good. 
Um, Lorraine, I'm just assuming their sense of smell can tell <laughs> what lemon furniture polish tastes like. I'm just assuming. Okay, let's see if I have the right measurements today. You ready? This is Blackberry Bliss, four and a fourth by five and three fourths. Let's do the long side first. We're gonna do half an inch, one and an eighth. So that means your box is five eighths of an inch wide, okay? And so five eighths is just one tick mark past half an inch. So just, if we're gonna do half, we go to one and then one more. So half, one and an eighth, then three and an eighth, and three and three fourths. Okay, now turn it and score the short side at, whoa, I almost did it wrong, five eighths. Oh my gosh. Please ignore that I just did that. You won't see it, I'm cutting it off. <laughs> oh no, I'm not cutting it off, oh well. Um, five eighths and three and five eighths. Okay, measurements are right today. Don't you hate that when you jump the track like that right there? Oh well, it's the side, who cares? They just care about the candy on the inside anyway. We're the ones that care about the cute box. All right, take your bone folder. I find that Blackberry Bliss cardstock's really thick. It feels thicker or stiffer than our other cardstock. So you really gotta tell it who's boss with your bone folder, okay? All right, now take your scissors. Here is the we did a half inch and a five eighths of an inch. I know it's not really showing up real well on camera, but hopefully you'll be able to see it. What's going on? Hold on, I gotta open open my video back up so I can see what's happening. Okay, um, can you rub the jump line out on the other side? Can you do that? What? Who said that? Brandy? Well, no, it's still there. I don't know, should I use my bone folder? I feel like I'm gonna make it worse. Ah, uh, didn't work, still there. I don't know, I'll have to try it. You know, this cardstock is very dark, maybe on a regular color cardstock. Um, Nancy, that's a, prob that's a problem with me too. None of my family like the lemon crisp Kit Kats, so then I have to eat them all. Yeah, it's a problem. Okay, half an inch, five eighths of an inch. So over here, we're gonna cut off the squares in the corners, okay? Like that. Now we're just going to, oh, wait, no, no, okay, we have to do something different here. These little flaps, if you cut, okay, we want the flaps to be attached to the sides of the box, not to the lid of the box. It's easier to close that way. So I'm gonna come in from this way and snip those score lines, okay? like that. Now I'm going to go on the long side and snip these score lines. If you do it the other way, if you come in from the side, from this side, it'll still work. It's just, I don't like when those side tabs are connected to the lid. I think it just makes it harder to close. Okay. All right. That's it. That's what your piece looks like. Okay, before I close it up, let's put this paper. This is the, look, it's the just kidding, cute little kid paper. And we're gonna put this right here. This is Berry Burst. Berry Burst and Blackberry Bliss. <laughs> Say that five times real fast. They go well together. All right, take your, I'm just gonna use my seal on this because it's a little tiny box. Take these little side tabs and we're going to adhere them here. But before I do that, I'm going to put adhesive on the inside of these. Okay, so I've put adhesive here and here and here. So the first thing we want to do is fold up those tabs into the back like that. And then we're going to just take these and wrap these around the sides like it's giving it a little hug. Okay, like that. All right, so see how the tabs are connected to the side rather than the lid. That's what I was talking about. All right, little Kit Kat action can go in, fold in, fold in, and tuck. And there's your little box. Now, I someone told me recently in one of our Facebook Lives to use my reverse tweezers when I was trying to hold ribbon together to tie it. I don't remember who it was, but thank you. We're gonna do that today. Take your silver edge, actually it's called silver What's it called? Silver and white. 
Well, now I can't find it. All these foreign languages, sheer ribbon, and then it says over here, yeah, silver and white. So fold it around like this, okay? And then just get your scissor, your reverse tweezers and it'll hold them in place like that. And then, because I was using a block to hold them down. The reverse tweezers are way better. All right, now we've got some of this silver trim. This is um, Simply Elegant trim comes with a two, two packs. It's got a silver and gold in the pack. So you get a bolt of silver, a bolt of gold. Retiring. All right, so now let's trim. Ooh, I'm using my yucky scissors on ribbon. And then you can just kind of pull that to tighten it a little bit. There we go. Isn't that cute? So cute, so silvery. You know what, I think, there we go. Can't get it even, there we go. All right, so cute. Now, we're finally gonna use the stamps as intended. You guys ready? Let me get my grid paper. We're gonna use them as they were intended as reversible stamps. So we got the cat. Do I have my smoky slate? Hold on, where did I put it? Right here, I forgot I need it again. All right, we got the cute kitty. And we're gonna stamp her. She looks like a her. Oh, it's okay. See, look, I left it on my block backwards. Don't do that yet. Yesterday I left it. Let's clean it and turn it around. Hold, please. All right, put her on like that. Now you got a little sneak peek of how it works. Now, memento black. Okay, clean. And give it like a second to dry so it'll stick. And then flip it around. And smoky slate. And I'm gonna stamp off so that it's not too dark. And then you just lay it right on your kitty. Like that, and there she is. She's colored in, she's so cute. Um, I'm gonna give her some pink cheeks with my petal pink dark, and just a little bit of pink on her ears too. Okay, now, berry burst. Whoa, berry burst, and charming sentiments. Charming sentiments right here. This is Lisa Curcio's Million Dollar Stamp Set. It is also retiring, and it's a great one. It has dyes. Make sure you get it if you haven't gotten it. All right, I have the dye sticking to my finger if that's what you're going to do. All right, let's cut the kitty out. The cute kitty all the way around. Are you guys doing something special? I forgot it's Easter weekend. Oh, I didn't forget, but it's supposed to be 85 here on Sunday. I think it's pool time, hopefully. Hopefully, we'll see after a little family dinner, then we will swim for, I mean, really kind of for the first time. I mean, I don't know, we have swum, swam, swum? Is that a word, swum? We have swam, but not really. You know, you, you, you kind of get in when it's cold and you're like a little, eh. Hiding your cooking, yeah, my mom and I are both cooking. We split the duties. All right, now here's the, the die. This die is a really tight fit. So you gotta make sure you're in the right section on all, you gotta go all the way around the edge, make sure everything's in there. Run it through. Ooh, barbecue, Karen. Barbecue is always the right answer. We do a lot of barbecue around here too. My husband will smoke a, um, pork butt or a brisket. We're not doing that this time. We're just gonna go old school and have ham. Oh my gosh, I forgot the important part of my box. You guys, I got caught up in the stories and I didn't tell you the important part. Okay, let's go back. The, the important part of this box is the cute little die. So come back to this, don't tuck it in. 
Don't tuck it in. Get this die. This is the second largest of the um, Thoughtful Expressions. And you're going to cut it in half. I can't believe I forgot the most important part of the stinking box. What's wrong with me? I'm thinking about other things. Now take, we're just gonna use um, tearing tape since I've already put it all together. I was thinking something, this box is really easy. And it just didn't enter my mind that I didn't do it right. All right, you're gonna put that on the lip of your, the one that we tucked in. And this is gonna fit perfectly. You wanna make sure that you've cut these corners off, otherwise they're gonna stick out behind that little dip right there, which you don't want. There we go. Now that's how your box is supposed to look. Even cuter, even cuter. And you've got two of them now because you cut it in half. So you have to make two boxes. Uh-oh, uh-oh. With your lemon Kit Kats or regular, okay. You're allowed to do the regular Kit Kats too. All right, here is the second smallest. So we've used the second largest and the second smallest. And we're gonna put the cat on the left side. And again, with my Give It A Whirl Hearts, Berry Burst, tuck that in like that next to the kitty. And then just for you, we're gonna put that right there, overlapping. And now we're gonna put that two dimensionals on either side. That way it's kind of sandwiching that ribbon and they can just slide it off. And now there's your cute box just for you. A pretty easy box, I think. Just a quarter sheet of cardstock, right? Isn't it? No, nope, you gotta use five and three fourths. If it was five and a half, it would be a quarter sheet. So you could get two boxes. Well, no, you could get three boxes out of a full sheet. Not bad, not bad. Change your colors up if you want. The kitty will go with any color. Okay, now I have some other cards to show you. Uh, this one was on my blog yesterday, the little fox. He's so cute. Um, I stamped him on uh, crumb cake cardstock and uh, made a background with him as well. Then this one I'll have on Monday. This one, I did the reversible technique and I did crumb cake. Okay, there's a random cork round sitting on him. It's not supposed to be there. It probably came off of this card over here. Um, crumb cake, pecan pie, and our new basic beige. Do you guys know we have a new beige ink pad coming to a catalog near you? All right. So crumb cake, basic beige, pecan pie. And look, there's our pattern vellum and that cute little paw print too. All right. And then I got two swaps during um, on stage from Randy, our friend that made 500 swaps. And, oh, this one doesn't have a name on it. I don't know who that one's from, but that bunny is cute in pink. Okay, that's it. Oh, I didn't get done by three. Darn it. I was trying to make it by three today. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, you guys. Here are your three projects. If you would like these for free, um, just get your orders in by Monday at midnight. No, Lisa, it's not replacing anything. It's in addition. Um, <laughs> Lois, it's a pretty affordable stamp set. I believe it's $20, is that right? And it's got lots of options, those cute little pets. And it's easy to use. Um, so I will send you the make and take kits for free by Monday at mid. If you put your orders in by Monday at midnight, you can order anything you want as long as it's $35 and uses the host code. Unless your order is over $150, don't use the host code because Stampin' Up! is going to give you some Stampin' Up! Stampin' Rewards, which is free stuff, and I will still send you the projects for free, Okay. All right, you guys, I hope you have a wonderful Easter as well. Sue, it's good seeing you. Um, hope, hopefully you have tomorrow off and you guys get to relax and uh, have a great Easter. Next week we'll be back with, I'm not sure. I'm planning on the plants, but it might be the cows. I'm not sure. You'll just have to stay tuned. 
All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Bye.